France. It's the Cube covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest going to help me with some analysis of what's been happening here at the show. Keith Humphreys, who is the Managing Consultant at Euroland Research. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Stu. All right, so Keith, uh, yeah, you, you and I were the only analysts at the Vienna show. Uh, last year, they, they've, they've grown the analyst program a little bit as uh, you know, uh, most of us in the community have been watching Nutanix for many years. Uh, tell us a little bit about kind of your background uh, and, and what specifically you focus on. Okay, so, so Euroland is an industry analyst company focused on helping vendors optimize routes to market in, in Europe. So we're a channel analyst company, founded in 93 in Paris, France. I was employee number five. Um, and we're still about five consultants. Uh, and as, as I say, we're, we're very vendor focused on, on, on channels. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it, it, it Goes without saying, in our industry, uh, things are changing a lot. But boy, has the channel been changing massively. Uh, you know, everything from the impact of service providers to the public cloud. Uh, so y y let's start kind of at the macro level a little bit. What, what are some of the, 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 the big issues? The channels always, you know, we say they're coin operated. Yeah. Um, but you know, where do they make money? Where are they concerned about? Uh, what's exciting them these days? I, I think at a yeah. macro level, what's really exciting, if, if you look at the book B for B, it describes the risk having gone from the the corporate back to the vendor. So before the enterprise used to, to buy kit, buy stuff, buy products and have to integrate them themselves. They'd take 18 months before they actually got a working product. But in the meantime, the, the vendors had, had produced the invoice, maybe not even ship the kit before they could recognize the revenue. Now with as a service, that's totally changed. The risk has gone from the customer right the way back to the vendor. It's, it's a fascinating point. And the channel's stuck in between here, trying to be the good guys, still trying to integrate that stuff, tr mm -hmm. still trying to um, produce those solutions, but only getting paid at a, a, an annuity revenue model. It's, it's very different. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I was involved in some of the early converged infrastructure solutions, and yes. you, know, you go to some companies, they're like, we make you know, tons of money racking and stacking and cabling. We're like, come on, that's not huge value add. Let's help you add more value, get more involved, be more consultative, solution selling and the like. We've only seen that accelerate with the like of uh, hyper-converged infrastructure and, and solutions as a service, as you said, where sometimes oh. it's just you know, frictionless. I yeah. you know, just acquire what I need when I need it. Uh, how's the channel doing? I, th I think the channel's doing okay, but yeah. they're in denial yeah. because of yeah. this issue. I think if you look at the way Nutanix started as a, as a, a box provider and now moving yeah. to software, some of the channel is really railing against that and saying, you know, we, we still want to do it this way. They're not learning the lesson that they must move to an annuity model basis, because it's a huge business transformation. We jointly run a, a workshop with IDC to help system integrators make that transition across. And we've only put through a half a dozen companies for it, you know. They should be knocking our door down to go through this, but they're finding it really hard. Yeah, all right, so how's Nutanix doing in the channel? So, so I think interestingly, I think it was Chad Sackett of uh, VMware said that they're having to bring out a proof of concept box for FeeSphere so they can put that box into customers so they can try it out. Interesting that, you know, you, for, for a software vendor, you're having to package something. So they've gone in that direction, whereas Nutanix are moving in the other direction, going to software only from the box. That, that's fascinating. But they're trying to drag that channel with them. Are CDW really happy that they're moving to a software only model? Maybe not. Well, well look, e even the, the, we've been discussing this week uh, the, the, the software only model. It, it, of course, there's still got to be an appliance somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, from, from a channel standpoint, if tomorrow Nutanix says, hey, we're only going to do the software and you're going to do, does that have a significant impact on the channel if they now get it from, if it's a distributor or you know, some other piece, is, you know, how much will that impact the channel? I, I think it's going back to the old model of, of digital days where, where the channel partner is going back to integrating stuff, which I think is great news for them because they can add value, but have they still got the skills? A lot of them have, have lost those skills. They've been de-franchised or they've defranchised themselves. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see 
how that plays out as to whether it comes you know, in a similar form factor. I, I, I don't expect that you know, they're going to be getting Lego pieces and putting together. It's, it's still uh, you know, mostly going to be uh, pieces. How about Nutanix has been going in a lot of new directions, trying to expand as software only. is isn't just about saying, you know, kind of, kind of the base stack in AHV, but you know, Xi and Calm and uh, some of these other pieces. The channel ready uh, for these kind of things? Is uh, you know Nutanix have to then do way more of it, and the channel's just fulfilling it? H how does that dynamic work? I, th I think Nutanix have got to go out and create the market. They've they've got to make end customers aware of this, and then then the enterprise customers will be asking their channel partners for it, so they'll have to get up to speed. You know, it's a push and pull model with the channel. You can't you can't just push through the channel. Yeah. I heard someone from Nutanix describe the, the channel as an extension of their sales force. It's just not. You know, Computer Center go out and sell Computer Center. They don't sell Nutanix, they sell their customer benefit, and Nutanix is a small part of that solution. Every project is, is software-based. It's, it's around SAP, it's around Oracle, and there's some infrastructure to run it on. It's, it's a small part. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. I got, got to interview a service provider that has then become a reseller yes. uh, of, of Nutanix solutions. It's uh, hotel, yeah. We sometimes say service providers are the new channel. Yeah. How, how's that dynamic playing out? Well, I, if I was to want infrastructure in our office, I wouldn't phone British Telecom for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what about, uh, we are talking kind of about multi-cloud world. I found, you know, there's some, uh, you know, systems integrators out there that are offering Azure services. Some are engaging, AWS has been, you know, really good building out, out their channel. Uh, how, how's that in Europe these days? You know, how much are, are, are the cha is the channel engaged in kind of I, the public cloud? We're, we're seeing Amazon with AWS starting to reach out to the channel at long last with channel programs, channel recruitment. They're not going to get rich reselling that, but they'll get rich by putting the professional services on there. You know, what, what should I run on here? Is it good for compute? Is it good for scaling? Is it good for additional workloads? They've got to add professional services. But even in, as we run our workshops, we see exactly the same thing. As, as they move to as a service, it, it might be um, profitable to a degree, but it takes you four or five years to get there. So you've got to be adding professional services on top of that revenue for, to maintain it. Well, I, I have to think there's good opportunity there because while you know there was this, this promise, well, the future's going to be simple, right? Public cloud, it's nice and easy, swipe a credit card and good. There's so many features out there. SaaS, anybody that's used SaaS yeah. providers, when yeah. I really want to use it, they're, they're, there's requirements there. So. Is the, the channel stepping up to, to fill some of that gap, I, or I, will the you know Accentures and uh, you know uh, the, you know the, the, those uh, kind of consulting uh, kind of come in and, and take that revenue? I, I think it depends on the company size. We 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 profiled in our newsletter a small UK company who who get digital transformation, you know, and this this quarter we profiled Accenture. They they're both doing the same things just addressing different parts of the market. I think the other interesting thing is, is you mentioned uh, the difficulty. Uh, ob obviously AWS uses its own terminology and it looks very complicated. But what I do like is the new Tanix one click based around machine learning. That's really exciting. Yeah. Sudesh Nair was just talking about uh, DeepMind's Alpha Go Zero and how it's learned the, Go, the Chinese Go program. Yeah. It self-learned that. No one taught that. It actually self-learned it. And, and there was an article on the FT which was trying to say this is frightening. Well, it's not frightening. If we're going to move into an IoT age, if we're going to move into an autonomous car age, we're going to need software that's written to Sigma 9, not Sigma 6. And I think only machines can do that. We're not very good at writing software. Keith, what more should, be, should Nutanix be doing? What, what advice do you give them uh, on what they can do to engage even more with the channel? They've got to ramp up the marketing. They've got to provide the air cover for the channel. They've got to go out and create the demand, create the awareness. The channel will follow through on that. All right, La last question I have for you. What, what, what advice do you give to the, the, the channel today for them to you know, stay profitable, stay relevant to, in this uh, you know, ever-changing future? It's professional services and annuity revenue days of selling boxes are gone. There'll always be boxes, you say, but you know, it's, it's pure commodity now. 
maybe they should invest in Supermicro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well Keith Humphreys, pleasure to talk with you uh, again and uh, thank you much uh, for joining us. Thank you, Steve. All right, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from Nutanix.next in Nice, France. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>